Hello there, Lizzie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a hoy, which is the wonderful cushion here. Um, really, pretty much a seaside theme. And this particular month, you'll notice in August that all the patterns are to do with holidays, sunshine, and having general fun. Um, and you'll notice that the patterns are called, well, two of the patterns, one's called Augie and one's called Augustina. And I always try to make, name the patterns after that particular month. Uh, but this time around, when I got to naming the cushion, all I could think of was Ahoy! <laughs> so that's what it's become. So in the pattern, which is a download on my website, lizzycurtis.com, you're going to actually get three different options of how to make this cushion. So in the templates at the back, and I'll just show you one of them, I'll show you the one that we've actually made on the cushion. You're getting the full pattern. You're also getting a little sort of example of what the pieces look like when you've actually put them together. But you get three different versions of the beach hut. So which is, which is quite nice, quite a nice little bonus. Um, this is all about applique and machine, I suppose machine embroidery, free motion if you want, but actually because all the lines, apart from the seagull, are straight stitches, just use your regular machine if you wish. A free motion is not for everybody. The sample that I've done, in actual fact, is free motion. So you'll see a lot of a lot of stitching and various different colours of blue. And I don't know if you're going to pick it out. Hopefully on the pattern pieces themselves, you'll see it much more clearly where there's different colours being used and different tones. And that adds to the texture and the feel of the cushion. I've also put this wonderful pom pom trim around the edges of the cushion. Now, again, this is purely down to you whether you like pom poms or not. In this example that I'm going to make for you now, I'm going to leave the pom-poms out of it. But obviously in the instructions, it tells you exactly when to put the pom-poms in and, and how to put the cushion together. So there's nothing left to chance. I hold your hand the whole step of the way. So with this little beach hut here, you'll see that it's sitting on a pier. So what we're going to do first of all is to join the two pieces of fabric together. So the, the two different colours of blue I'm going to pop together first of all, and then we're going to applique our pieces down onto the cushion. And of course, it really does depend on how much stitching you do as to how your finished cushion looks. So with all that said, let's pop that to one side. <laughs> Let's pop it over there and I can always reach for it in a second and I'll pop the pattern over there as well. So the first thing we need to do is to, like I said, stitch those two pieces of fabric together. Now I've chosen blue and um, obviously you could choose whatever colours you like, um, but it's because it's a seaside theme. The blue represents the sky and the sea and I thought it'd be lovely to have that. So um, they're different sizes, a smaller piece, larger piece. And all we're going to do is one seam all the way down there and we're going to press it well and then start to apply our applique pieces. Now, um, this, uh, this pattern has a quarter inch seam allowance when we're stitching it. So let's just make sure we've got it on a nice little stitch, a little bit of a back stitch, and then you can do your quarter of an inch all the way down. move the machine a little bit. So that's joined our two pieces of fabric together as you can see but I need to press that because we're going to do the applique next we need that um, seam to be nice and flat. So let's just get the iron on, get our ironing mat. Now you can decide where your seam goes, you can split the seam in two and do half each side or you can decide to press into the sea or into the sky. It's up to you. I shall press into the sea on this occasion. So this is my sea. <laughs> so it's just a case of pushing that seam away from you. And you could set the seam if you want to. If you're a quilter, you'll, you'll be wanting to set the seam. I, I don't think always think that's essential. But this is not quilting. So there we are. There's our lovely pieces put together lovely and neatly pressed. Just going to turn my iron down just a little bit. So now it's a case of placing the, the pattern pieces down according to your guide. So like I said to you before, right at the beginning, 
on each of the three different pattern or the choices, it shows you an example of what the beach hut looks like. So you're going to follow that. Uh, before we do that, all my pieces are ready to stick on, if you like, glue on, but there's one piece that isn't, and I wanted to show you just what I do. So there's my stripy fabric for my beach hut. It has bondaweb on the back. So actually it's heat and bond, but you could use bondaweb or steamer seam, whatever is available to you in your country and what's available easily online, that's all I use. It's a lightweight, it's nothing too, too um, stiff. So I'm placing my beach hut on the paper side of my piece of fabric. Now with the stripes, I can see through my, the back side, the paper side of my heat and bond, and I can see the stripes. So just follow those stripes. And obviously you're going to uh, cut. And when you cut, again, you'll be watching where you're cutting because really with stripes, that's the only time I'd say to you, try and be careful. So I'm literally drawing around my pan piece. Now, if you're thinking of making a few of these, I suggest that you actually cut um, these out of card and store them away with your pattern so you've got them for another time. So just cutting through, and like I said, just watch for those uh, straight lines in your fabric and try to keep those uh, as accurate as you can because that's what's going to draw your eye. I must admit, depending on how much stitching you do, will, will depend on how much of it can you cover up. It's kind of like a disguise. Okay. So obviously I've done that with all of my pattern pieces. Now it's the opportunity to put these down. So if we look at the cushion, let's get it back. <laughs> You'll be able to see the first thing we need to do is actually the pier and put the little legs underneath the actual pier itself. So that's our first thing. Now I'm going to leave it there so you can keep your eye on it. So all of these have to have the heat and bond taken off the back. And there is a definite technique I use. You may use something completely different. All I do is get my thumbnail and I just run it up the paper. I don't score it with a pin because you can easily scratch your fabric. And that will easily separate your paper to your fabric piece. And then we're going to place this on our pattern. And if, if we look at the one here, the cushion we've got here, it's just a wee bit below that seam line. So I'll, I'll do it that way. Keep consistent. There isn't an exact measurement for this. I would say an inch, maybe a couple of centimeters. Um, you decide. It's your cushion. So there we are. So there's our pier. I'm not going to stick it down just yet because I need to have four legs placed on here. Now, hopefully, even though I'm doing it upside down, <laughs> we can get these all level. Now, the actual pier piece is one inch wide by about 14 and a half inches 15 inches um, you make it the length that you want the actual pier legs um, there must be a name for it posts um, about half an inch wide a little bit thinner so all I'm doing is placing those underneath my pier and there's the last one here now because we're gluing these down with heat and bond um, you might decide not to stitch this. You might decide that that's enough for you. Now, hopefully I've got my legs all fairly in place. Now, when you're doing applique, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Because the chances are you may disturb some of your pieces. So just place your hot iron over the top of your pieces and press down. I'm just holding it down. And that will be enough to melt the glue and it'll all stick together beautifully. So no rubbing just pressing down and if you feel it hasn't caught enough for you then once you think it's stuck down firmly enough then of course you can move your iron about and just distribute that heat and to be perfectly honest I would go over this a couple of times just to make sure and read your manufacturer's instructions on your heat and bond, bond web, steam and seam, whatever you're going to use. I can only tell you the brands I know you need to find one that's good for you. Some people like heat and bond, some people like bond web or oh, political. Right, so the next thing we need to do is to put our beach hut. So again, get your thumbnail and just scrape up. It doesn't have to be any pressure at all. And it automatically lifts, it kind of separates those layers a little bit. And you can just get your nails in there and pull that apart. And then if we look at the one we've got here, so I'll bring it up so you can see it. 
you can see roughly where it's placed so it's way over to one side so we'll just we'll just pop it down where I think I want to put it I kind of don't want it right in the middle of my my post so I'm going to put it off center a little bit I think that'll be fine and again just place your iron down get that heat through and like I say don't don't rub it because you could easily move that and I know I'm rubbing it now but we know that's all glued down it's just habit isn't it so I'm happy with that and of course it does depend on how much stitching you're going to do as to whether you think you know to, to make sure that that's in, in place so I'm going to put the little roof on now so this is going to be great fun because you're going to be using scraps of fabric all little pieces that you've sort of put to one side for just these sort of projects and uh, and think about the colors that you may like I mean go to go to a British seaside and that you get all the colors of the rainbow on beach huts which are very expensive to buy so just place that down like that um, and then we're going to put the doors on so you've got the back door which is a kind of big rectangle and again in the pattern you you all get this rectangle shape and then you get different doors different styles so you can choose the one that you like the best so I'm putting that background piece down here again try and make sure that it's lining up with all your stripes if you're using stripes and just press that down let the iron do its job and then we've got the quirky doors now we had a bit of a debate in the household as whether we should have quirky doors or definite sort of straight doors and quirky doors in this case one <laughs> so it looks like it's been made out of like driftwood I quite like that and, and it is intentional don't think that my drawing skills have gone haywire <laughs> this time it was intentional <laughs> So again, just peel that back off, place your doors down. I would obviously place them both down at the same time before you iron, just to make sure you've got them absolutely equal. And I think you can see that fairly clearly. And again, just pop your iron down. Don't wriggle it about. Because the worst thing can happen is that you catch your pieces and it, it curls up the corner and it bends over and you'd have to peel it off and start again. And of course, we've got the plinth that goes over the door. And again, that's a kind of quirky piece of driftwood effect. Um, this may be something that doesn't appeal to you. Maybe you need a straight line for a, for a plinth. And I've even popped it at a quirky angle. If you look at the one we've made here, or I'll leave it as it is, it really is kind of going off at an angle. And that's totally deliberate because I want it to look like driftwood. So again, pop that down there, hold it in place just for a moment, just to make sure that that's sealed. And then we've got the little seagull. Now the seagull is the only one, only thing really, any of the, the part of the pattern that's got curves. So you may want to stitch it, you may want to um, just let it be a stuck piece because obviously we're using a product here that is pretty permanent um, and it'll be fine I'm just thinking whether I want it sitting yeah I'm just gonna leave because <laughs> if I start fiddling we could be here all day and basically that's it the, uh, the idea of the stitching is to give it now depth and dimension and interest um, I've got my back pieces already cut as well everything you need is on the pattern everything every measurement every dimension um, and every step of the way is on the pattern so that's the design let's have a quick look in the monitor looks okay to me <laughs> now because I've done free motion on here and that's something that's either going to appeal to you or not in this demonstration I'm actually going to uh, I'm going to change my thread to a dark blue thread and I'm going to use the straight stitch and my regular foot feed dogs up just my regular stitch on my machine and you can actually create some wonderful effects the main thing is for me I'm going to be using a variegated thread so with free motion, free motion embroidery you tend to get the movements of your free motion 
if you're using uh, like a variegated thread and a straight stitch, your eye will still move. It's quite interesting how a variegated thread can make a difference. So if we're using this, just the regular machine as it's set up, a variegated thread, you'll see that it actually makes quite a nice stitch. Now I'm only going to do part of this because to do all of it to my sort of satisfaction, I would have to go over the lines three, four, five times even, and that we haven't got time for. So I'm going to show you one part of it. Maybe I'll do the pier and the legs and leave the hut for another time, the beach hut. So I'm just gonna go away and change my thread now. Okay, so I've got my variegated thread now onto the machine. One thing I need to talk to you about is if you start to do uh, free motion, if you want to do free motion stitching, uh, and in actual fact, even with this straight stitch, I would advise that you put some sort of backing onto your cushion front, okay? So you can either use a wadding to give it a little bit of puffiness and depth and a little bit of almost like quilting, but you've got to remember you're only doing the hut and the pier. So maybe that's not going to be right for you. The other thing you can get, do is use a stabilizer or an interfacing to give your piece a little bit of structure. Uh, you might find though that your cushion, become, your cushion front becomes quite perhaps not stiff, but it has a little bit more structure than if you didn't use interfacing or stabilizer. So um, what I suggest is to use a tear away. Now, well, I don't think I've ever used a tear away before on any of my YouTube tutorials, perhaps maybe just the once. But it is a good product to have if you haven't already got some try and get some if you can if your budget allows and see how it works for you now because it's tear away what happens is that because we're only stitching quite small areas look i'm going to be using a massive piece now you might think gosh that's a terrible waste lizzie um it's kind of not <laughs> because whatever i don't use i'm going to be tearing away okay and so even the waste, however small or bigger it is, it can be used on another project. It's not ruined, it's not glued onto your project. The other thing is, if you want to use a hoop, if you're doing free motion, then please use a hoop if that's, if that's for you, okay? And um, if I was doing a lot of free motion in a particular area, a small area, I definitely would be using a hoop. So even though I'm doing a straight stitch, regular stitch, I'm still going to be using a stabilizer. I'm still going to be using this tear away it, because it gives the fabric a little bit of structure, a little bit of strength to hold all the stitching you're going to do. If you don't use it, you might find that your seams become puckered because you're going over and over and over. You don't want to do that. Plus you're giving the fabric strength. So if you're going over a particular area, I don't know, five, six times, which is possible on a piece of machine embroidery of any sort, you don't want to make a hole in your fabric. <laughs> so by using a stabilizer of some sort or wadding, it's protecting all of those layers. Okay, sermon over. So I've set up my machine. I've, I've put my, I've just literally laid it over the top. You don't have to glue it. Listen, if you want to use some uh, temporary spray, literally that's it, just to hold it in place. But come on, you don't really need to. It's not, it's not made for that sort of thing. So there we are, I've stuck it down now. But even when we tear it away, you can still use it. So don't think any of this is a waste. So um, I think I'm gonna start, like I said before, with the pier. And because we're just using a regular straight stitch, that's all I'm going to do. Um, I would set your stitch at a slightly larger stitch, let's say three, because at the end of the day, it's like a top stitch. So all we're going to do is literally follow the line. So my feed dogs are up. Uh, got my regular needle, regular variegated thread. Um, I'm, I'm not doing free motion. I've got my regular foot on there. But I'm following the lines of my project. When I get down to the end of the pier, I'm just literally going to turn my machine like I normally would. Um, in fact, I'm going to just go back on that. There we go. And again. <laughs> it's difficult, it doesn't want to stay on the pier, but never mind. Um, and then I'm just going to come up 
Now, with this particular design, you could do all the stitching of the pier before you iron your hut down, okay? So you bear that in mind. When I did mine, because I do free motion, I kind of do it as one big picture. So I'm literally going up to the side of my hut, I'm going to turn my piece around, and I'm going to come down to where I was before. Now, if you're using, and you'll notice this is gonna get a bit you know, complicated with how I'm holding it, but you'll notice that when you're using variegated thread, you'll get all those different colors laying on top of each other now, and that's what's going to make it interesting. But don't also don't forget that this is all glued down. So we're literally doing this for decoration only. So now you can see I'm coming back to where I started. I'm just gonna snip that thread because we don't want that thread to be caught up with the stitches. So we'll just move that away. And I'm just coming up again. I'm just, let's move that a little bit. And, and because this is all one piece, um, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna behave like it, you wouldn't normally let it behave. In other words, it's, you're gonna have more fabric under the arm of the machine than here, because if we were doing free motion, we could actually move it better than that. We can go side to side, up and down, and side to side and diagonal, and we wouldn't have this issue, let's say. It's not an issue to me, but it might be to you. So just remember that, because we're using a straight stitch, the kind of the rule book has changed. Let's get this machine so it's not rocking. There we go. So now I'm coming up the other side of my pier. Straight stitch, and this variegated thread is looking absolutely amazing. If you feel brave, <laughs> I'm not sure I'd recommend it, put your reverse button down. I'm holding it, and, and reverse up, up your pier. I think we'll just turn it around. So, <laughs> So go over your stitch lines again, make them a bit wriggly if you want to, because then it'll look like you've done some free motion. And really, I haven't got a care in the world with this. I'm really enjoying. And I'm just gonna give it some back stitching there just to make it interesting. So really what we will do is carry on like that. Now, if you want to do the one of the posts of the pier, just stop where you've come to that pier there. I think you can probably see that okay turn your fabric around so we're going to now do this little post now this is where i would definitely be using the reverse button so down your post and i'm just going to go back up i'm going to go down i'm going to go back up the variegated thread will give you those different colors layered on top of each other using just regular thread you wouldn't get that effect so it kind of gives you that free motion feel if you like by using um, the different colored threads that you can use in free motion. If you want to change your threads, change your threads. But a variegated will um, prevent you from, not prevent you, it will, it will allow you to do that look without having the bother of changing the threads. So a quick mention about my gold club if you haven't joined already there's no time like the present just pop to my website find the link that says gold members sign up here and then you have access to my facebook weekly events which is absolutely amazing my girls love it and of course you get the free patterns as well so if you want more information there is actually a video on youtube that you can have a little look at So let's just go up and down, up and down. Now in my original one, let's bring it in again. In the pattern, you'll probably see there's an awful lot of stitching going on at various places, perhaps where the shading is. So if we look at this, the, the legs on the pier here, you'll notice that there's an awful lot of stitching going on, which gives it depth and dimension. I've even put some stitching here along the wood to give it a wood grain effect. You know, it's, it's it's fun, it's, it's kind of drawing with your stitch. So if you want that sort of look where you're kind of filling in, let's say the shaded area, we can still do that with a regular stitch. So if we go back up to, let me just reverse up. So we're up to the top of the leg. I'm gonna take my needle out. I'm going to shift my foot a millimeter across. And then I'm just going to two, three lines, back up, Needle up, needle up, <laughs> move it across a millimetre, 
and do that again. And you'll find, as I said before, that variegated thread really comes into its own. And I'll show you what I've done when I've finished this little post here. And like I say, you can really go to town with the stitching. So let's just go back a wee bit. Needle up. Just move that foot across a little bit. And just do that same effect. You've got the reverse bun, so use it. Don't keep turning your fabric. So let's just cut that thread off there. And if I hold that under the, the light there, under the, the monitor just above us, you'll be able to see the sort of effect I've done. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But because I've used this variegated thread, you can see we've got yellows, greens, dark blue, light blues, all different shades, which of course what is what you would get at the seaside on a pier like that. And again, you can see the different shades of blues and yellows and greens coming around the pier. And please carry on, don't stop here, put more on here. So you'll continue like that all the way around your beach hut until it's completed. <clears throat> and like I said, with your little um, seagull up here, okay, so you may want to try free motion. This is a good time to try. It may be something that you're really not keen about. So get your fabric pens out. You must have some fabric pens in those cupboards somewhere. So get your fabric pens out and draw on your seagull. Put his wing in, put his eye in, maybe put a little bit of a piece of fish and chips in his beak. But you can do that with your fabric pen. You do not have to do free motion. Even though I love it, I know perhaps you don't. But the opportunity is there to try both. So on the back of our work, now you're not gonna see this because my thread in the machine was cream because that's what I was stitching with before. You may want to use variegated thread. I don't think it's necessary. Just keep to your regular bobbin thread. If you're gonna do proper free motion, then you'll probably be using bobbin fill or something like that. So once you've stitched it all, and uh, let's just remember where our beach hut is. So our beach hut would be here, and all of that would be stitched through our tear away stabiliser. But we, we have, we're not getting that far today because uh, mm, it'd take you about, it'd be about a three hour video at least. So I'm just tearing this away. Funnily enough, it's called tear away stabiliser. I'm pretty mean when it comes to stabiliser. I want to use this again. I've got several projects on the go where I'm going to be using hoops and I know this will be absolutely perfect if I very carefully tear this away. Be mindful of your stitches. You'd obviously, you don't want to break your stitches and if you feel it's a little tough and it, it won't tear away, just snip it. So look, that's my piece and all of that is really useful for other projects. I'll just I'll pop it on the floor for the moment. Again, don't be worried too much about what you leave on the back of your cushion. You may want to sort of get your scissors in there and pull it away. And, and obviously you're gonna throw those pieces of way, away. But you'll find if you, if you buy a sweatshirt or a jumper that has a logo uh, embroidered on, on the front, you'll find possibly some white stuff in amongst all the embroidery on the inside of your um, your sweatshirt and this is the product the factory has used which is readily available to us uh, thank goodness in the domestic market and it's what they've used and you'll find and I know you're perhaps not going to see this very well but you'll find that on the badge that's on the inside of your sweatshirt you'll find little pieces of what looks like paper it's not it's the tearaway stabilizer but to give it that rigidity ready for the embroidery so let's just assume that all of our embroidery, all our top stitching is done. It's then to go onto the back, and this is really super easy. Uh, gosh, we must have covered this a, a gazillion times. If you want to, ooh, you could add your pom-pom trim. Now, my top tip is to actually put your pom-pom trim onto the front of your cushion, rather than, let's start again, on the right side of the front of your cushion. Um, a, because you want it to be on the outside of your cushion when you turn through. Put it on the inside, wouldn't be the right way around. So put it on the right side. So I'm not going to do it this time. It's very clearly shown in the instructions. Let me see if I can find the end of this. Oh, I did a, such a good tidy up job of this. I'm not going to find the end. Yes, I found the end. <laughs> this was a bit of a mess up until yesterday. So be aware that pom-pom trim can be stretchy. 
okay can be stretchy please don't stretch this because as you stitch it on if you stretch it it means that your cushion is going to be all ruckled so i would suggest that you place it onto your cushion get a pin and pin it use your quilters clips and clip it in place and stay stitch that all the way around your cushion front before you've put the back on okay so then that way it's in place, it's not going to move, you've done the best you can. Use your zipper foot to actually put the bobble trim on because you've still got those bobbles to contend with. I dislike stitching bobble trim. <laughs> it doesn't matter which foot I use, it goes off here, it goes off there and you really have to take your time. What you could do is to hand stitch it down. Yeah, 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 I said the hand stitching word and stitch it down with long basting tacking stitches uh, do it that way maybe that's going to be a little less stressful than fighting with your machine once you've got the back on it kind of sandwiches the bobble trim in there and actually it becomes very well behaved so you just got to get past that first bit so it's just a case of placing the bobble trim all the way around when you come to the corners give it a little bit of more slack that way it will as you turn it the cushion i'm pointing because the cushion's there it will sit better you'll have a nice neat corner so that this is the stage after you've done all your embroidery to put the bobble trim on okay so the next thing we need to do is to actually prepare the back i've still got my variegated thread on but let's just pretend it's cream because it saves me a bit of time so let's bring the machine in oh oh my gosh such a, such a heavy beast turn it back down to two and a half again to your regular stitching we were on three for our top stitching so with your pieces you'll have two pieces that are absolutely the same size as your cushion so the the, the depth that is and what you're going to do is actually let's get that that way around what you're actually going to do is stitch uh, these backs so you're going to fold over once and you're going to fold over again so let's do that let's do it that way around don't know why that seemed a little bit strange to be doing it that way um, and all you're going to do is top stitch so let's just check going on two and a half again there we go and you'll find that um, with these backs it's a it's a bit of a rectangle okay um, you don't want too big an overlap so let's just stitch that okay so that's one half done so we just need to do the same with the other half now don't forget you're not going to use variegated thread you're going to use a, a matching thread to your backing I've, I've chosen a really nice stripe it's the same stripe as the beach hut because it kind of I kind of thought it went together um, and then just do that quarter inch turn quarter inch again we're top stitching and if you wanted to you know find a stitch on your machine a nice decorative stitch that looks like a wave uh, maybe you've got little sunshines I don't know there might be something really really pretty in your decorative stitches that you could go round down the back of okay so now we've got our two backs done and you'll find that um, Let's get lots of bits all over the place you need to put right sides together so one of the one of the one of the clues with all of this is right sides together okay so when you're doing the bobble trim it's kind of like right sides together you need to put that bobble trim on the right side of your fabric even though in your head that might not be right it absolutely is so now if we had the bobble trim there we're going to be encasing it inside the cushion and when we turn it out that bobble trim will come out as well so perfect with the actual back of the um, the cushion itself we're going to put right sides down now I'm, I've remembered I've got cream thread in my bobbin so actually it looks <laughs> fine my variegated thread is on the wrong side which is how we've stitched it so put your right sides of your pieces down so you're going to place one down first and you're going to put the second piece right over the top you're going to make a little sandwich and you're making the flap so where we have 
put those pieces on top. My cutting is atrocious. Let's not show it off. Um, so where we've actually overlapped these, there's a little flap and that allows you to put your cushion, your cushion pad inside. So let's just flatten that down. Pins, clips, well, let's lose pins today. I feel rebellious. Um, the main thing, my main tip when doing a back like this, uh, an envelope back, is to make sure that you do a really strong double stitch and I mean going over it and coming back on it. I'll show you as I go round. As much as I really want to finish this cushion, the embroidery part, what I'll do is I'll finish it off for you guys now and actually I'm going to unpick it uh, because I really want to finish that embroidery. This, it's my favourite thing to do. Um, yep, I can spend many happy hours doing that. So I'm just bringing my um, raw, raw edges together, right sides together again, like I said. So you sh what you should be seeing now is the wrong side of your cushion front. So you'll see all your stitching, your patch, your bits of uh, tearaway stabiliser. Um, and then you'll see the, the seam line of that quarter inch fold and that quarter inch fold again, top stitch. OK, so that's what you're looking at. And it's kind of all the wrong sides. So really, we're just going to stitch all the way around. I'm going to do a long stitch because like I just said, I've admitted I'm going to unpick it, but I need you to see the process. Um, um, I'd go for a quarter inch seam allowance again. And if you want to, if you've got a overlocker, serger, please put this under your serger. It makes such a strong finish. So it's just, I'm going to whisk along. I'm not going to go over my pins. And you're literally just going all the way around. Just make sure you're catching all of those um, raw edges. Don't forget, guys, we've hand cut these pieces. It's open for human error. So now we're coming to the part where those two flaps are sitting on top of each other. Normally, and I'm not going to do it today, normally when I get to that first bit, so if we look at it here, there's the, the, the flap, uh, they overlap if you like. So when I get to that first piece, I would go over it, reverse a few stitches and come back and maybe even reverse again to give that cushion pad that we're going to sh shove in the back the strength in the in the actual cushion itself. So we're not giving the cushion pad strength, we're giving the cushion strength. All right. Carry on. So again, when you're coming up to those two layers, those overlaps just here, I would be going over a few times, but I won't be doing that. Because, like I said, I want to finish this off. It's my, my task for the next couple of days. And to be honest, it really does give me a lot of satisfaction. OK, guys, I've run out of thread in the bobbin. I'll come back to you with a full bobbin. So while my bobbin, I've even put my cream thread back on. And so I'm just going to finish off that seam. Again, like I said, a quarter of an inch seam allowance is plenty. And in actual fact, like I said before, if you've got an overlocker, a serger, it would be good to use it because it gives the cushion a lovely bit of strength. And this is certainly something that would look absolutely stunning in your garden. If you've got a big enough garden, maybe you've got a balcony, you've got a little chair on the balcony. That would look lovely, wouldn't it? So again, don't forget, going over those sort of overlapped pieces, I would give it a uh, sort of reverse, give it some extra strength, some extra stitches. Just coming back to where I started. So I'm just going over those stitches again, cutting my thread off. Now, you may well want to trim your corners off and, and do all that sort of thing. That's entirely up to you. But let's just see how it looks. Now, this is a version without the bobble trim. So it's going to look a little different to that, the one I've made. Plus, it hasn't got as so much stitching on yet, but we'll rectify that later. And so all you're going to do is turn this through. Now, because, um, like I said before, get my turning tool. Um, because I said before, we haven't used any wadding or um, interfacing. Uh, it makes the cushion very soft and malleable. It's much nicer to actually lean against. If you're using the tearaway stabilizer like I've done, of course, all of that can be torn away and you're just left with the fabric. So there's our, our back done. You can see it's got a nice sort of flap over to put your cushion pad in. And when we turn it around, 
I haven't pressed it obviously, but that's our cushion made. Can you see the difference between adding a little bit of bobble, even though it's not my favourite thing to do, and to make it plain? So it really does depend if bobble trim is your thing or not. And actually, you know, the stitching on the one that I've done, doesn't, don't you think that makes it stand out? So it's worth spending some time on that stitching, even though we're using straight stitch. So remember all those things I talked to you about. Use a variegated thread, keep reversing back, do four, five rows of stitching and wave it slightly so it looks like you've done free motion. And why not? If somebody asks you, oh, did you do free motion on that? Yeah, totally, totally, okay. So this is a hoy. Okay, it's not named after the month that I created it. It's not named after August, as with Aggie and Augustina. But hey, I quite like to hoy. So there we are. There's your cushion done for our fabulous summer that hopefully we've got now. Maybe we've got to wait a few months, depending on when you're watching this. So have fun making a hoy, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.